you know, Jay Cutler, he was always known for those like those risky throws, right? Those game changing plays. Oh, absolutely. Like remember that time he led the Bears to victory against the Packers? 2013, I think it was, that last yeah. second touchdown pass. Insane. Anyway, seems like that whole risk taking thing. Well, I followed him off the field. Yeah, this time the stakes are a lot higher, that's for sure. We're talking DUIs, gun charges, the whole nine yards. This is more than just a Monday morning quarterback situation. We're diving deep into the Jay Cutler case, and trust me, it gets complicated. It really does. What we have here is, well, it's more than just your average DUI case. We've got police reports, court documents, witness statements. A whole shebang. Exactly. And they paint a picture that's, well, let's just say it's messy. So let's break it down. It all started on a Thursday evening in Franklin, Tennessee. Cutler's behind the wheel, and boom, car accident. It's important to note the police report it describes the collision as minor, meaning there weren't any major injuries reported, thankfully. But uh, it's what happened after the fender bender that really gets interesting. That's where things take a turn, right? Exactly. So the police report, it says that when the officers arrived, they noticed a strong odor of alcohol on Cutler's breath. Plus, his speech was slurred and his eyes were bloodshot. I mean, those are pretty classic DUI indicators, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. Those are like the textbook signs that law enforcement is trained to look for. They suggest, you know, potential impairment. Right, right. And the report, it also mentions that Cutler refused to take a field sobriety test. And then at the hospital, they had to get a, what was it, a blood search warrant. Yeah, a blood search warrant to obtain a blood sample. So I'm curious, if you refuse a sobriety test, is that like automatically an admission of guilt? Well, not automatically. There could be other reasons why someone might refuse, but legally speaking, it's definitely not going to help their case. Makes sense. You see, most states, and that includes Tennessee, have something called implied consent laws. Implied consent. Okay, so what does that mean exactly? Basically, it means that by driving on public roads, you are essentially consenting to a breathalyzer or a blood test if an officer suspects that you are under the influence. I see. So when you refuse, you automatically face penalties, things like license suspension. And that's even before you even step foot in a courtroom. Wow, I didn't realize it was so serious. Oh, it is. And in Tennessee, refusing a test, it means an automatic one-year license suspension, even for a first-time offense. Whoa. So it's like, even if you're innocent, refusing the test makes you automatically guilty in the eyes of the law, at least to some degree. Well, it's more complicated than that, but essentially refusing the test is not a good strategy. No, definitely not. It's kind of like, it's like fumbling the ball at the one yard line. Exactly. Not the smartest move. Yeah. But from what I'm hearing, it sounds like Cutler might have made a few more questionable calls that night. You could say that. According to the police report, Cutler actually tried to leave the scene of the accident. Wait, seriously? He tried to just drive away. It seems that way. And, get this, he allegedly offered the other driver $2,000 to not call the police. What? Are you kidding? $2,000? I mean, come on, he's not exactly rolling in dough anymore. It's not like he's still playing for the Dolphins. What was he thinking? That's a good question. I mean, it's hard to say for certain what was going through his mind at the time. Was it a sign of guilt? Was he just trying to avoid the situation entirely? Or was it just a moment of panic? It's bizarre, right? I mean, you'd think he'd be a little more careful, especially in his hometown. You'd think so. But, and this is where it gets even more complicated. Remember those police reports and court documents we mentioned earlier? Yeah. Well, they reveal something else that takes this whole situation to another level. You're talking about the gun charges, right? I mean, this is where those gunslinger comparisons suddenly become a little too real. Exactly. During a search of Cutler's vehicle, the police found a loaded pistol. And a rifle. A loaded pistol. Brent. And a rifle. Wow. He was really packing. He was. And that's where this additional charge comes in. Possession of a handgun while under the influence. In Tennessee, that's a Class A misdemeanor. It's a separate offense from the DUI and could carry much more serious consequences. So this isn't just a slap on the wrist and a night in the drunk tank kind of thing. We're talking potentially serious jail time here. We are. In Tennessee, a Class A misdemeanor like this it could mean up to almost a year in jail, plus fines. Wow, this just got real. And I mean, we're talking about someone who was, you know, in the public eye, someone people looked up to. He was a role model for sure. Exactly, yeah. and it's not like this was just some, you know, random guy in a rental car. This is Jay Cutler, 
in his own backyard, making decisions with huge consequences. It really makes you think about like the whole picture, like those perfect lives we see on Instagram for celebrities and athletes. It's not always the full story, is it? Not even close. But just to keep things clear, let's stick to the facts for a moment. Cutler was arrested that night right there in Franklin. He was booked into the Williamson County Jail. Oh, wow. He actually spent the night in jail. He did, but he was released later on a $5,000 bond. $5,000? That's what, like a parking ticket for these guys? Pretty much. But here's the thing. This whole case, it's far from over. Cutler has a court date set for January 16th, 2025. January 2025. Mm -hmm. That's ages away. It makes you wonder what's going to happen between now and then, especially with his, you know, personal life. I mean, we can't talk about Jay Cutler without mentioning the whole Kristen Cavallari situation. Right, his very public divorce. And you're right to bring it up. You see, when you're a public figure like Cutler, everything gets amplified, right? The media, the fans, everyone's got an opinion. Yeah, it's like they're living under a microscope. Uh, exactly. So when you throw legal issues into the mix, along with a high-profile divorce like this one, things can get messy. Details from the divorce, whether they're relevant to the case or not, get picked apart. It's a recipe for disaster. It's true. The court of public opinion can be brutal. Absolutely. And if you look back at the divorce filings, Cavallari, she actually made allegations about Cutler's conduct. She claimed it made living together unsafe. Oh, wow. I didn't realize it was that serious. Well, those were just allegations. It's important to remember that. Right, of course. But now, with these new charges, it's not hard to see how those old claims could resurface, you know? And that's going to impact how people view this case, even if it's not directly related. It's all connected in the public eye. Exactly. It just goes to show you, the internet never forgets. And in Cutler's case, this whole thing, it really highlights the double-edged sword of fame. One minute, you're throwing touchdowns for the Dolphins. Living the dream. And the next, you're facing serious charges. Your personal life is all over the news. It's a cautionary tale, that's for sure. It makes you think about the kind of pressure these athletes face, even after they retire. The constant scrutiny, trying to live up to everyone's expectations. And let's not forget the pressure to maintain that edge, that competitive drive, even when they're not playing anymore. That doesn't just disappear overnight. So are we saying that's an excuse for, you know, messing up like this? Not at all, but it's something to consider. It makes you wonder if this need for risk, that same instinct that made Cutler such an exciting player, maybe it played a part in this whole situation. Think about it. He was famous for those risky throws. Like right? the ones that made you hold your breath. Exactly. Sometimes they were brilliant game-winning throws, and sometimes, well, they were intercepted. But either way, he was willing to take the risk. And now it seems like we're seeing a different kind of risk-taking, just not on the field. It's like he's calling the plays, but in his own life now. And the consequences are way bigger than just losing a game. Right. And that's what makes this whole thing so fascinating. It makes you think, can you really separate the athlete from the person? Or are these actions, these choices, are they all connected somehow? It's a tough question, no doubt. But there's this whole other layer we haven't really touched on yet. And that's the legal system itself. Oh, absolutely. Because this isn't just about Jay Cutler, right? It's about how DUI and gun charges are handled, especially when it comes to celebrities, athletes, people in the spotlight. That's a really important point. There's always this debate, right? Is there a different standard for people in the public eye? Do their actions carry more weight or are they held to the same legal standards as everyone else? Yeah, because we've all seen those cases where it seems like a celebrity gets a slap on the wrist for something that would land an average person in serious trouble. Exactly. And while we can't speculate on how Cutler's case will specifically play out, it does bring those questions to light, you know? Questions about accountability, about privilege, about whether justice is truly blind. It's almost like those courtroom dramas, you know, where the defense attorney, they try to paint the client in the best possible light, yeah. separate the person from the crime. Right, right. And the jury has to decide what to believe. It's all about perception versus reality. And in Cutler's case, well, the court of public opinion, it's already in session. Social media is buzzing. Fans are taking sides. Everyone's got an opinion. Really. Exactly. Which makes you wonder how much of that will actually influence what happens in the courtroom. Is it even possible to have a truly unbiased jury when the defendant is a household name? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? It is. It's something legal experts debate all the time. And there's no easy answer. Right. If there were, it wouldn't be nearly as interesting. And I think that's what makes this whole deep dive so compelling. 
you know, it's not about finding the right answer. It's about exploring all the angles, the complexities. Absolutely. It's about asking the tough questions, challenging our own assumptions. And having these kinds of conversations, even if they're uncomfortable sometimes. It's so while we wait to see how everything unfolds with Cutler's case, I think it's a good reminder for all of us to think about these bigger issues. Celebrity accountability, the legal system, the choices we make when everyone's watching and when they're not. Well said. It's been quite a ride today. We've covered everything from the football field to the courtroom, from DUI charges to loaded guns, from celebrity divorces to the very nature of accountability. It's a lot to unpack. It really is. But if there's one thing we want our listeners to take away from this, it's the importance of critical thinking. Don't just take the headlines at face value, you know. Dig a little deeper, ask questions, and engage in these important conversations. Couldn't agree more. And hey, next time you see a Cutler jersey, you might just see it a little differently. That's for sure. <laughs> Until next time, everyone, keep asking those tough questions and keep that critical thinking going.